Foundation uh, and touch a little bit on some of the U.S. regulatory requirements that are currently apply to submerged oil and some of the things that are moving forward with the Coast Guard. Some of that's part of the uh, updated Oswell classification guidelines. I can talk a little bit about the American Petroleum Institute uh, API put out an excellent submerged oil response guide uh, and some historical case studies and then some advances in technology. By no means is this the only thing that's out there. There's been a, an enormous amount of advancements in the last 10 years or so. Uh, this was a statement from NOAA in 2008. Non-floating oils provide response challenges significantly different from floating oils. Technology for tracking and predicting the behavior of submerged oil remains in its infancy. Currently, there does not exist robust and effective ways to remotely detect sun sunken oils under realistic field conditions, nor significantly understand its uh, ultimate fate. There's a lot of truth to that, but, but I will say that there's been a lot of advancements as well. Um, these are the current regs that are in place for, for salvage. These are the uh, salvage of rain firefighting regulations that are in place for salvers. And if you note right here on the very bottom, uh, they're talking about specialized salvage operations, which includes the subsurface product removal. Now, uh, this is more based on vessels that are sunken that, that contain product. But uh, these, these regulations are in place. And you can see they're associated with them, our timelines that the operation has to be in place. Currently, the uh, U.S. Coast Guard is updating the, the Oswell classifications. In the past, um, if you were an Oswell, which we are, you simply just put a check in the box that said you do submerged oil recovery, and that was it. They're taking that to a whole nother level uh, now, and it's going to be a very detailed presentation you have to do uh, in a report form of how you're going to do submerged oil recovery, what type of equipment you have, you know, what you can do for detection, recovery, uh, uh, waste management of it, and a number of different things. And then this will be submitted to the Coast Guard. You'll get a temporary classification, and then it'll be submitted. And then the, the thing I really like about this is that then there will be a preparedness assessment verification so it just won't be some, some uh, paper tiger, it'll, it'll have to be real. And based on that too will be your history, your case history, and your experience of doing submerged oil. This was a job we, we did last year in 2015. This was a, a collision in the middle of the channel. This is on the upper Mississippi River. Uh, two vessels collided. And uh, this right here was the, this is the number three starter tank, all four of these pictures here. It was a total, um, you know, totally took the tank out. The cargo on there was a clarified slurry oil, which pretty much immediately sank and sank to the bottom of the river. This was kind of the, uh, the collision took place out here, kind of mid-channel. And then the, the captain of the towboat pushed it up on the beach here, and then this is where the salvage operations took place to prepare the, the barge to remove it and get it, get it off site. And additional pumping took place. A little bit of residual oil was left in the tank. So it happened, uh, they, you know, they happened to know it pretty well, have a pretty good idea where the submerged oil was, so it made it a lot easier. But actually the person that found this was a fireman and uh, it actually located these these are his images here this is just the oil that sunk and he actually just used a hummingbird side scan basically off the shelf from home depot and these are his images so we, you know as the operation went on we got more sophisticated stuff and to verify it we put duck divers down and, and samples were taken but indeed it was the uh, slurry oil so just kind of while this was going on, this is a report that's been that was being put together by Jackie Michelle's group here, RPI, and she had got people like ourselves, Qualitech, and a number of uh, industry experts, and put this very comprehensive guide together for uh, responding to submerged oil. I, again, I really encourage everybody to take a look at this. Um, it's very you know it's easily online. It's through the American Petroleum Institute. So we kind of used this and it was kind of a, a first time 
uh, using this guide, and it helped us to uh, go through whoops, go through some steps here um, of what what's good and what's bad based on the conditions we had, water depth, water visibility, water current, and then it's kind of a quick guide that tells you what you know the ones that are in green, what are, would be the most uh, applicable to this type of a uh, scenario. Uh, I mean, within the guide, it explains this stuff very extensively, so you have a real good idea of what the different technologies are. There's also tables like this that include for different types of detection you would use, waste management, uh, and a number of other different things. So we decided, uh, based on this, and we kind of actually had already, we're moving forward with uh, what's called the uh, environmental clamshell, which was this here, and, and, and this kind of confirmed our thinking and all this to help present all this and, and put it into a plan to present to the Unified Command for approval. So we chose the environmental clamshell. Uh, this was uh, the third job that I've worked with this particular piece of equipment. And it's designed, uh, it's lightweight, it has a venting system with the opening up here at the tops. And then the real neat thing about this is that it takes a level cut. It's not like a conventional dredge bucket where you use the weight of the bucket just to drop it, you take a gouge out the bottom and you lift it up. This, you, you lower it down uh, right here and then it scrapes the bottom. And the operator does have some control so he can somewhat control the depth that he's taking so you're not taking excess sediments because anything you take is now gonna become a waste material and uh, very, very effective. We've had some real good success with it. And so this is what the operation looked like throughout the middle of the channel. And uh, the clam bucket is on this crane here. Initially, we, we used local resources. We used this big spud barge here. And uh, this was very deep for the Mississippi. We were in 90 foot of water. And the spuds were having a hard time get, getting a bite. We actually put some extensions on it. So while that was, we kind of got initially started, we uh, de de decided to bring in a, an anchoring barge, which worked extremely well. We set a four point anchoring system up and that allowed us to maneuver the barge. We could either swing it either way or move it upstream or downstream and cover quite a distance. And then in here was our recovery area. So the, the clam would come down between here and then this, this here are hopper barges, which we were fortunate in the area that we were working, there were a lot of these hopper barges that were available. It's not always gonna be the case. And then this was a containment we put across to kind of just handle any residual stuff that may be, that may be floating. And then here's just a, uh, a response boat that if anything escaped, the other thing they would dab it up with uh, pads and so forth. This gives you a good idea of what we're recovering. You can see how oiled the bucket is. It was a very thick, viscous oil. And the other thing that's real neat about this system is they have what's called, it's a dredging software, it's called Clam Vision. And the operator has it screened right in his, uh, in the cab of the crane. He can see via GPS, he can see every place that he's placed the bucket and how many cuts he's taken. In some cases, we'd take a cut and uh, it may, we, we'd have an enormous amount of oil in there, so we'd decide what well, we'd take another cut. And this, this we could, by, he had a radio in the cab and we just had to direct him how we wanted, what we wanted him to do, either move over to the next slot and, it had, uh, and then he'd work in another grid. So while this is going on, uh, we had all the stakeholders, we had Coast Guard, the state of Kentucky, NOAA was very involved with this. Um, there was a representative from Polaris there was on behalf of the uh, plan holder. And so they were kind of, they were part of the decision and basically watching every bucket come out and determine whether, you know, whether we wanted to move on or continue taking another bite out of a certain area. And it worked very good because even with, in the case of the Coast Guard, um, if there was a, like an all stop for some reason, there was a question, they relayed it back to the uh, captain of the port, the FOSC decision was made and within 10 minutes we continued on with the operation. 
Polaris was hired on behalf of the uh, plan holder and they would basically were tracking everything. Each one of these grids here represent roughly about 25 meters by 25 meters. And that's how it was documented and determined. And then you can see this kind of showed the progress and then, then a daily report was put together and that as well was submitted to the uh, Unified Command. So in summary, uh, there's roughly 2,870 barrels of clarified slurry that spilled. You see the API on that, the viscosity very heavy, 160,000 centistoke. And the, and the oil sank straight to the bottom. We were all wondering with that much oil if there'd be residuals in that along the shorelines and that. And there really wasn't, it was quite clean. Uh, and then some of the things that were used for detection and verification were the side scan sonar, the these orbs, which I'm gonna show some pictures here in a little bit, sediment coring, and then in diver observation, which you know many times that's if you can, if it's safe, it's you know, it's a good way to confirm things. Uh, the rev recovery technique was the environmental clamshell dredge, and we recovered about 2,260 yards of oily sediments. <clears throat> 